In the closing month of the war in 2009, 50,000 civilians were killed, with hospitals deliberately targeted by the government of Sri Lanka forces. 150,000 civilians remain missing. 300,000 civilians were rounded up and put into concentration camps. Now, the majority of those people have now been released, but they've got nowhere to go to. They're internally displaced people. They can't return to their homes, to their businesses and their farms because the Sri Lankan government is deliberately controlling the land in such a way as to facilitate the transfer of Sinhalese settlers from the south into the traditional Tamil homelands of the north and east to facilitate what is by legal definition genocide. Furthermore, independent human rights observers from Amnesty International, International Crisis Group, have not been allowed to enter the zones of the north and east. So what magical powers of observation and knowledge does Julie Bishop have that other people don't? How does she know it's safe? When this is the information credible human rights organisations are receiving. Blood on your hands! Julie Bishop! Blood on your hands! Julie Bishop! Blood on your hands! These abuses include murder, they include torture, they include forced conversion to Buddhism. They include the systematic destruction of homes. They include, indeed, everything that is commonly known and understood to constitute ethnic cleansing. And Julie Bishop knows this. Now advocating is that the Tamil people were able to escape the brutality in Sri Lanka and come to Australia should be denied their legal right under international law to seek asylum and to have their claims heard. She wants to create a category of people defined by their ethnicity that is outside rule of law and that systematically falls outside, falls outside Australia's protection obligations and there is nothing more racist than that. You can't hide, you're supporting genocide. Julie Bishop, you can't hide, you're supporting genocide. One person is disappeared on average every five days in Sri Lanka. One person every five days. So that means any kind of dissident, a trade unionist, a journalist, a human rights activist, anyone that says boo is liable to be picked up by a white van picked up off the street with their body turning up on a rubbish dump three days later. That's what's happening in Sri Lanka, one every five days, and that's in the south. That's where there's less violence going on. That's the reality of Sri Lanka right now. For God's sake, in the four years since Mahindra Rajapaksa has been president, 23 journalists have been killed. This is the place that Julie Bishop think people should be returned to without even reviewing their cases. And in June this year, a British High Court stopped the removal of Tamils because it considered they were at risk of torture if they were returned. And the British High Court are not necessarily the huge doyens, the human protectors of human rights. If the British High Court finds that it's a risk to send Tamil asylum seekers back, why in God's name would Julie Bishop want to send them back? I think all you can say to Julie Bishop is that when you say this stuff, Julie Bishop, the blood is not just on Roger Pax's hands, it's on your hands too. Blood on your hands!